the biggest Tesla logo I've ever seen. And I wish I'd have learned at a much younger age how special the mothers are in our lives. Mm -hmm. And and that's our, our goal is to pass along to the youth, to, to share with them how much, but respect their elders much earlier in age and you'll flourish. A little backstory on this RV. I saw this months ago going down the highway highway on 77 here and uh, going towards Charlotte. We took some pictures, posts on Twitter, and a lot of people had a lot of questions on it. The other day, my parents went to Walmart and called me and said, hey, this, this RV with this giant Tesla logo is in the parking lot. I knew exactly what it was, so I ran down there and took some pictures. Parked my Model 3 behind it to act like I was towing it. Kind of trolled some people. Had some fun. Well, the next day, local fan of the channel, subscriber, uh, called me and said, hey, this guy's here with this RV. Would you like to talk to him? So I stopped what I was doing and I ran over there to the RV, had a conversation with Cooper. Very interesting guy, very interesting life. I'm gonna play some of the stuff at the end, but he's got a great foundation where he's he gives money to a lot of charities through his foundation. There's a link down below where he's giving away this, this Tesla. It's helped him go throughout the country, running across country in marathons. He's actually giving it away on October 13th of this year. I've entered to win the car, got a great opportunity. It's only like, for one entry, it's only like $17.73. Your money is going towards good charities, kids' charities, men's health, women's health. It's all good stuff. I'm gonna play you some of what I learned about him and his story. I got to sit down in the RV with him and talk to him and found out why there's a big Tesla sign on there. Not my typical video, but hope you enjoy it. Who's on first? What's on second? Ready? So I'm just gonna ask you a couple yeah. questions that people have been asking on Twitter since right. I posted the picture. Is this powered by Tesla batteries? It's not powered by Tesla okay. batteries. <laughs> there, there is not one that exists on the planet yeah. yet. Of course, they... they is, it, is there solar on this? No, no. Okay. There, there was in the beginning, but okay. I, I haven't used it. Okay. Um, was this built by Tesla? This was not built by okay. Tesla. <laughs> I had to throw those in because yes. everyone's asking those questions. Absolutely. There's a big Tesla sign on the side of this. What Correct. Is, what is the affiliation with Tesla and you? Well, the affiliation is in 2012... Well, let me go back and tell you what I do for a living. I install CNC computer numerical controlled robotic routers. Okay. And Tesla called up the company that I represent and told said, hey, this is what we need, this is what we want. When I got those instructions to go, I had I was already been living out in LA in this motorhome. I bought this thing in 2008 and I drove west and we had most of our customers out there and that's where I work on aerospace machinery. And so Tesla ordered a machine. Mm -hmm. I got the orders to go install it and that's kind of how the relationship with Tesla began okay. when they bought that and I installed that piece for them. And then the machine that I'm speaking of, you could drive this motorhome inside of that robot. Oh wow. Yeah, it's not a small okay. tinker toy machine. <laughs> And then that kind of spread because that went in the Tesla R&D Center, which is in Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. Okay, the manufacturing is up in Fremont. I've been there and went through a tour, but none of the equipment that I work on is up there. I'm always down in the R&D Center. And then right beside Tesla R&D is SpaceX headquarters. Yeah. So SpaceX has, has multiple machines that I've been putting in since 2012 awesome. up until recently I've, there's probably 20 or so machines yeah so it's a cool place, I, cool I, was place. There, I was there for the model y event so we got to walk through the the, the alley between a lot of the buildings to go to okay the, um to well the design then studio. we probably crossed paths and didn't know it probably probably more than once yeah. we have I've, I've only been there once no but somewhere else oh, Mooresville, probably, oh, probably who knows where oh, i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure so I, I never forget a face so I remember now. I, I forget names. I don't forget I forget names too. <laughs> Tell how, me about your story, about what, what you're doing with the car, with with the basketball and all that How it stuff. started. The easiest uh, way to nutshell it and, and get it down is on the website there's a timeline of how this all started. Mm -hmm. And it started really when I was had this motorhome, still black and silver, 
parked at the Golden Gate Bridge installing a machine up there and I lost my grandmother. She had passed and I woke up right here, looked in that mirror and said, hey, if I don't want to look at this, who else wants to look at it? Mm -hmm. So I started power walking and Coop's personality is a dreaming extremist okay. with no shutoff valve. <laughs> it's full throttle or we're not even going. Okay. Um, so anyway, we power walk. You been to San Fran? Uh, no. Okay. Well, you will. You'll go it. And uh, sure the the BART is the Bay Area Rapid Transit. Mm -hmm. So you power, I power walked two miles just when I was 220 some pounds. And originally I was going. I went to go buy a bike, but I ended didn't find a bike and I ended up with sneakers. And that's when I started walking. I'd ride the BART down to watch the Dodgers and Giants, and then power walk back. Uh, the LA Marathon in 2010 started a new location. Mm -hmm. Where's that location? Dodger Stadium. Mm. I'm just starting power walking. I'm not trained for a marathon. Yeah. But because it's Dodger, starting at Dodgers, I want to be a part of it. So I sign up. They're not going to change the date for Coop. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and signed up for this marathon. No idea that I'd ever run a marathon in my life. I never thought I'd do one either. But mm -hmm. once you do one, you're either all out or you're all in. And yeah. Coop's all in. Yeah. So he's searching for his next marathon and he wanted to do it close to when his his grandmother passed and that was I found it to be on the island of Kauai the Kauai marathon hmm. so I went and ran that marathon after I ran that marathon I met a gentleman by the name of Bart Yazo but he created the Bart uh, or the Yazo 880s when you run the 880s what is that that'll help you tell you what your marathon projected marathon time will be without running the marathon. Okay, I met Bart, bought his book, read it on the flight back to LA, found the next challenge. Ten places you must run in the world. Yeah. Found myself the next year on the, uh, the, the airplane to uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. It's a 56 mile event. Jeez. Really? That's not for me. But anyways, I get in it do it and it's very strict over it's called the comrades marathon they treat that marathon like we treat the indianapolis 500 over here oh really it's serious <laughs> it's real and you you finish like an olympic style and you have to finish 11 hours 59 minutes 59 seconds no grace cut off you're out well i missed it by uh, a, a little uh, i don't know a few minutes mm -hmm. so i had to go back the next year to get the medal but anyways the next challenge 100 miles 100 miles and I did it up in uh, by Crazy Horse and then after I got that 100 down I, I ran in and I met this this lady named Kara Lubin. You meet Kara Lubin you, you, you instantly fall in love with her. She founded the 100 mile club and the 100 mile club um, she's a special education teacher and she wanted to help her students get better focused and, uh, on their classwork and fight child obesity. So once I did that at the 100 mile event, then the race director for that event, Darren Van Soy, he's got this vision to start this team to run on foot from Huntington Beach to the White House. Six marathons a week out of seven days, rest on the seventh, four months. Well, I get the invitation from him. Number one, I'm like, how does someone take off work financially yeah, exactly. for months? I didn't know that. They're going to do that for one, pers one purpose, and that's to raise funds for the 100 Mile Club. So the whole point for doing it. The project comes up in Florida, and I'm out here working, installing for SpaceX and, and Tesla, and it's a high demand. Mm -hmm. I mean, my phone, I mean, if they, get, they got me living right there plugged in where they can ring my doorbell 25 hours a day which that's the way it is I mean I mean you got to do it right now or get out of the way they're getting somebody else this other project came up in Florida how am I going to juggle this and, and I had to share with uh, the guys at SpaceX that I had guys in place to take care of them while I would be taking care of the project in Florida. Well, I went down there and done that project. When I got down there, that project m made it so that financially I could sign up for that event with Darren. So I signed up. 
once I got signed up for that event, I was still finishing Florida. Mm -hmm. So this hundred, this race across the USA, they got a plan for that. Coop, everybody that knows Coop knows Coop doesn't plan much. <laughs> but this is a year out planning. So I signed up for a year. It's going to be from uh, the third week of January all the way to the first week of June. That's the timeline of Huntington Beach to the White House. So I come back, I, I'm, si I'm taking off with the team, and I got to throw in one other thing. Because I told Darren the only way I was joining the team is if he allowed me to dribble basketball while we ran it. And of course, there's other stories, but they all look at you like you've got three heads. What, what do you want to dribble basketball for? And there's a significance factor to that. After several discussions, Darren agreed and said, Coop, you probably won't even make it across Arizona dribbling that ball, but we're going to let you do it. Yeah. And so anyways, we took off, we did it. Well, before that, SpaceX bought two more big CNC's that were going to be delivered in that timeline uh -oh. of the team going across. So I had to go through all of fall, all the way through the holidays. Is Coop going to go play Forrest Gump <laughs> and, and, and leave SpaceX hanging and leave financial on the table? What's he going to do? So I had to make the decision. And the way the timeline worked out, of course, the machines coming from Italy, they're always a little bit delayed. Mm -hmm. So the event started Huntington Beach and we could get to Parker, Arizona before the machines arrived. So I went with the started with the team and we saw if we could make it to Parker, Arizona and we did. 10 marathons 11 days later, 267 miles. One basketball, that official game ball. It's not going to drill. This isn't it, but we have it. The uh, it was fish. I like dribbling official level leather balls, even though they're not designed for concrete. Yeah. And so, anyways, I went back and took care of the the team went on, and I went back and, and took care of the machines and got them all put in with SpaceX and whatnot. Um, but the significance of that is, while that happened, my mother became ill with stage four lung cancer, and I was working on the machines. And then I would fly from LA direct to Indianapolis, come down, pick up mom, get her to the doctors, and we did that for quite a while as the team was going along. I would sparingly go out and do a marathon or so with the team here and there, and then. Uh, Finally, it got to the point where my, my mother and grandmother own a little a beauty salon in the little small town of Shoals, Indiana. And we celebrated 75 years of in operation before they before she uh, left. Um, so the day the race team got to Alabama, me and Mom drove down there together. I mean, she's that was like May, and she only lived until August. So you can about imagine yeah. she wasn't in the best health, but we wanted to share as much time together as we could. Of course. And and, and we put her in the back of the vehicle SUV and, and made her bed and put pillows and anything she needed. She was chauffeured the, the whole way, yeah. and she went down there and hung out with me, and and we enjoyed it. But at the end of the team, the last four days in D.C., I went back with the team and finished the last four marathons and drove by or, or dribbled past the White House and that was in early June and then uh, in August is when mom passed on and that's when it hit me that I was gonna pick up this basketball and finish what we started and dribble it all the way across the country to pay tribute and honor her life as what she done for me and I wish I would learned at a much younger age how special the mothers are in our lives mm -hmm. and and that's our, our goal is to pass along to the youth to, to share with them how much there there's nobody on the planet that loves us more than our mother of course and, and then our father yeah and, and and but respect their elders much earlier in age and you'll flourish that's 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 the whole mission behind all of this but why did it, why, you, your question was, why is it a Tesla wrapped bus? Yeah. Okay, because the bus is setting, living at SpaceX. 
Okay. And when all this was happening, and I was being asked all these questions, we're, we're raising money for the 100 Mile Club. Coop's from a small town, little short guy. We don't, we don't think small. How can we be the top fundraiser? How can we raise the most funds? Mm -hmm. Boom, light bulb. Elon and his guys are paying me to put in the machines, take that money, give it back, buy the Tesla, sell chances to help others. That was the goal. Mm -hmm. now, obviously, we should have, but the Model 3 didn't exist. Yeah. We had to do, and if you're going to do a giveaway, you're going to give away every option available. Yeah, exactly. You're not doing any yeah. shortcuts. Yeah. So there was no, there's nothing on that P90D that's not available. The back seats are there for the kids. Oh really? Yeah, and you got to have the ten thousand dollar P button. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the fun part. Exactly. The ludicrous. Yeah. How how busy is Elon? You know the number one question I get asked when they know that I'm putting in the robots at SpaceX. Oh, you meet Elon? Oh, you know, I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Are you really serious? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I've seen him give his speeches and, and yeah. on the unveilings, but no, we don't go sit down and sit, have dinner mm -hmm. and lunch. He's got five kids. He's got, he runs all this way stuff. Way too busy. Way too busy. Yeah. When I was out there putting in these machines, that's how it came about um, to do business with who you're working with. And that's why um, when we were taking, going to take the car across the country, we're going to have Tesla on one side and SpaceX on the other, but you know that Tesla is public, SpaceX is private. I went and spoke with both of the, the lawyers of both companies. Because of the business relationship I have with both, mm -hmm. and one public and one private, the advisement was to not have any thing of, of the rockets on the vehicle. And then when I, when I spoke with Tesla, they were sitting down just like this and Coop, why do you want to put that on top? <laughs> well, number one, I'm a Tesla owner. Mm -hmm. and we have it and and we love the product. Why does anybody buy a Budweiser shirt or a Chevrolet shirt? Mm -hmm. Why do you do it? Because you love the product yeah. and, 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 and you just do it. So that's kind of how it went. So Tesla said okay they took it in and said we approve it it's just not endorsed why isn't it endorsed you know the answer to that mm -hmm. Tesla doesn't advertise mm -hmm. so if they endorse they'd have to pay me yeah. well they pay me to do the machines they don't pay me for yeah. this I'm fine with that mm -hmm. it's a about a lot more than a dollar sign <laughs> it just is yeah that's how it ended up being Tesla wrapped red. Now the the painting. Did you you saw the painting on the back? Yeah. Okay. You you've got the story now yeah. about the painting. Okay. So the painting is SpaceX Incognito. Yeah. So yeah, it's that's it's a, that's a cool painting. It's, it's on here too. It had to be on the motorhome. So is that going to stay on the hood of the car too? It is. It's, okay. It is. It's awesome. It is. And you know, depend the winner's gonna. It's gonna be theirs, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be their choice. Um, and the drawing's coming up soon, isn't it? October thirteenth. Okay. From we'll we'll be announcing it live from the island of Maui. Um, it'll be about seven thirty Eastern time here in, in North Carolina, and about one thirty Hawaiian time, okay. give or take. A few dribbles here or there, yeah. <laughs> depending on when I get across the finish line. So people can still enter to win that. You can still enter, yeah, yeah right now. Uh, I, I did yesterday while I was sitting here. Cool. I have bought one, so <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Then I got your name there. Yeah. So Mike and Nelson is the is the painter, is the artist of the painting, mm -hmm. and he painted this after we'd given him the tour of SpaceX, and he painted it on the island of Maui, and. At the end of the show, he, pa he paints during the concert, at the end of the show, he tells everybody standing around like this what it is. He says this is uh, what he saw going on the tour. This is Earth. He 
This is the red planet, Mars. This is the head shape with the ears, the neck, the shoulders, the bloodstreams, the oceans, the dolphins, the birds, the trees. This is humanoid, human, everybody working together to occupy Mars. That's the theme for SpaceX, Occupy Mars. That's pretty cool. That's the painting. So, 